Hi, uh, what is your name? Robert Bordner. Robert, and where did you grow up? Lebanon. In Lebanon? Yeah. Where about? Uh, Broad and Poplar Street in the beginning until I was eight years old, then we moved into uh, Third Street between Chestnut and Robin. Okay. And uh, then from there I went to Fourth Street. And by the time I was a teenager, it was on the north side at Eighth and Church. Tell me about your parents. Well, my mother was worked at the box factory. She made uh, pies for some restaurants. A hard worker, uh, pretty woman. And my dad was a, uh, a welder at uh, one of the steel farmers in the beginning, and then uh, later on for cleaner brothers. Okay. Any brothers or sisters? Two sisters. Who were they? Sandy and Shelby. Did you tell me your mom and dad's name? Uh, Lena Bordner and Robert Bordner. I thought you said. Um, do you have any claims to fame? Um, is that a good question? I did some nice things in sports uh, along the way. I pitched uh, four no hitters in Little League, which I don't think anybody's done. Wow. And uh, I pitched six all total. And I had an offer from the Phillies. Wasn't for a lot of money, and they wanted to send me to Alabama, and I didn't want to go to Alabama. So you almost played major league. Almost. Oh wow! Yeah. You must be good. Now, it's hard to say. It's too early in life to tell, and that was a long time ago. Okay. You know. And how about your relatives? Any famous relatives? Well, I was doing my ancestry. One of you should ask me that question. <laughs> but I was doing my ancestry, my DNA. I had my DNA on file at uh, ancestry.com. And uh, one of my fa family members was an Eisenhower in the tree. And uh, uh, so my, my grandmother, uh, Mildred Wilson from Freeman Street, used to say, I wonder if we were relatives of President Eisenhower. And nobody could answer that question, you know. But, but this DNA has been a wonderful experience. So I asked the question on, I did some research through Ancestry, and I started to, started to feel that this was a possibility that I was a relative. And I asked some questions on Lebanon over 40, and a fellow by the name of Tom, Tom uh, uh, Snyder, I think it was, uh, we now play words together, uh, told, me the, told me the direction that I was going in was correct. And what I, what I learned was that one of Eisenhower, Eisenhower's fifth great grandfather or whatever, fourth or fifth, I can't recall the number, uh, lived in Lebanon. Uh, Peter, Peter Eisenhower. And uh, they had five, four or five generations of Eisenhower's grew up there. They're buried here. The last one to live here in our area was uh, Frederick Eisenhower, and he, and he passed away. He was the one that went to uh, Kansas, where Eisenhower was born. And but he was buried. He's buried in Lingostown, someplace. I'm not sure where. And uh, so this Tom got everybody together uh, that he could find that was also a relative from uh, Lebanon of the Eisenhower family. And I think we located about ten people. And we have our own website. And we haven't gotten together yet, but I met some of, some of the other members. But I met those people on Lebanon over 40 and found out the helpful information through that, not only through. Now, the thing that bothers me the most about that is that no, you don't ever hear a mention about Eisenhower's family living in Lebanon. We talk about Babe Ruth living here and some of the other people, you know, that passed. But I think it's very exciting to know that Eisenhower's family ties to Lebanon is very, very strong. Do you know if he ever visited here? He lived here. Oh, you mean Eisenhower? Yes. Oh, no, I don't, I'm not sure that he was even aware of the significance to it because I'm sure that there were other things that were more important to him than Lebanon, Pennsylvania. So not like Washington came into the uh, Cornwall Iron Furnace and things like that. Dwight D. Uh, David Eisenhower never made it this far. No, but uh, uh, the, the, the things that I read about uh, Peter Eisenhower was I'm also a relative of, the, of Peter Walmer, and they came here on the ship. There were 19 young men, very little money in their pocket, and they uh, sailed on the ship Aropia. And somebody from Lebanon the Forty had to manifest and send it to me. And uh, of course, there were their names on there. 
and they docked in Philadelphia, took the oath of allegiance to the king, and Peter Walmer and Peter Eisenhower came up this way and uh, bought land in Lancaster, which is now Lebanon. Prior to that, it was owned by Lancaster. And they must have been good friends because they ended up buying land in the Uniontown Gap area together. And uh, the Eisenhower's, uh, Eisenhower's one son was scalped by the Indians in a raid. No way! At the, Walter, at the Walmer family, uh, they raided that area, that, that family. They had five kids, three boys and two girls. They took everybody captive. They got the boys back, the three boys. The girls were never found. And that land that, that they owned became our national cemetery. Really? And all of my relatives are buried there, and I think it's so ironic. No, I'm sorry. That it, and, and I, I'm just going to assume that they were friends because they bought land in Lancaster, and they bought land, in, and, and they're, they were neighbors. Uh, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to get some recognition for Lebanon as being the birthplace of the Eisenhower family. I mean, we know they're buried in, in, in this area. So when they came from what country? They came from Germany. When they came from Germany, was this the first place they migrated to? Yeah, they came, uh, they docked in Philadelphia. They took uh, the Oath of Allegiance, all of them took the Oath of Allegiance at the, in Philadelphia. And then they migrated wherever they wanted to go. And Eisenhower and Walmer came this way and uh, settled in Lebanon, which would be, uh, which was Lancaster back in those days. And then four or five generations were here until Frederick Eisenhower moved to uh, Kansas. Okay, well that's a really interesting story. Did you tell me what you did as uh, for a living? Uh, I'm a retired advertising man. Okay, I wondered if you were a history teacher because you really recalled all that stuff pretty good. No, I was. I was a. Uh, I worked for the Patriot News for 25 years. Really? Okay. And then I had my own advertising agency after that. Okay. Is uh, there anything else you'd like to talk about that I didn't ask you? No, I don't think so. I think that's plenty. Can I? Okay. Can I ask? Yeah. What's your question? Where did they migrate to when they came from Germany? You said Lebanon, but what? They were, they were part of that Palestinian group that came no, in. No, what area in Lebanon? I mean, right the, here. Right here. Yeah. In town. Yeah. Yeah. In the, yeah. They eventually settled both at the Gap area. Okay. In fact, the Gap land was National. from Walter and uh, and the uh, Eisenhower you. land. And I think Walmer had 277 acres, and him and his wife were out uh, working in the field. The kids were inside the house, and a, uh, a raiding party of Indians, about 30 Indians, led by the, the son of a commander of the fort in, uh, I think it was uh, Franklin County, and they raided the house, took the kids captive, took some bread and milk and the things that they could get, gather about them and left the trail, they were easy to find. And they, uh, they uh, eventually, like I said, they eventually got the uh, the boys back, but they never found the girls. Yeah. But, but it really brings to life the area and what it was going through. Another interesting thing I read was uh, Eisenhower's, or uh, not Eisenhower, but George Washington's journal. And it was his own, in his own hand. And during the Whiskey Rebellion, when he was president, because uh, I was trying to find out whether he really slept here or not. Yeah. And uh, if you Google Washington's Journal, 11 in PA, you'll find what I found. Oh, really? And he started out from Philadelphia with, with, with a, uh, a troop of men, and they, they were on their way to Carlisle to settle this Whiskey Rebellion. And they stopped to see the canal, and they stayed at the, they didn't stay overnight at the Tulpa Hawking, but they fixed their horses there, fed them, and changed their shoes, and so on and so forth. And they described what it was, what Lebanon was like, how many churches there were here, what the buildings were like, and uh, they, they, they continued uh, into uh, Hummelstown. Hummelstown was spelled with two names, Hummelstown, okay. described the area. And then they stayed overnight at Harrisburg and uh, described a walk along the river. And I could picture where they walked. It was very easy to do. I mean, worked Fort at Hunter? Well, no, it was probably downtown Harrisburg. Oh, okay. Where you would see 2nd and 1st Street along the river okay. there, I would imagine. And, and there were, the difference would be like 
the Harrisburg had maybe 35 churches, and Lebanon had maybe two, you know, and uh, the, they used that, to have circuit the houses for in pictures. Harrisburg were made of brick and wood, the combination where in Lebanon they were mostly wood, mm -hmm. log, you know, log. And houses. limestone some. You know, and just to, just to listen to his words, read his words, and, and it's beautiful handwriting. It just made the area come alive a little bit more to me. You know. But I couldn't find if he slept here at all. All right. Well, thank you. You're it was welcome. a pleasure talking with you. My pleasure. Yeah. Woo!